Thank you for the invitation. I'm very happy um, to get the opportunity to present some informations about um, the IT market. And um, yeah, I would like to share in the next half hour um, some insights on the IT market and our conclusions uh, from them. And what I would like to mention that I'm really very sad. It's such a pity that I can't be with you in Sofia and that I have to do it uh, this time uh, on, uh, on a remote way. Just a few words to my person. I am Tanja Stetter and I have been working in market research and analysis for around 20 years. 15 of them have I'm in the IT industry. And since seven years, I'm with also taking care of the provision of market information. And additionally, I'm a lecturer at IU International University in Germany. And I would like to start with the current macroeconomic situation that can be described best by the words of IDC that I have read in an article, a perfect storm of disruption is blowing over Europe, they have written. And um, yeah, that's true because um, external forces that have an influence on the market, that's nothing new, that have existed always. But what new is, is that these influences are constantly in the past, they have been mostly temporary. And to stay in this picture with a storm, um, in the past, this was more a wind of change, but this wind of change has developed into a storm of disruption and this storm is blowing over Europe. Everything starts with a pandemic. Um, with the pandemic, we have entered in an era of poly crisis where storms are no longer the exception. Storms have become the rule. And what is tried to be shown here in this image is that the frequency and amplitude of changes are increasing. According to IDC research last year, there are three main factors of particular concern for European IT companies. The first one is the inflation. The fear of inflation worries almost every second company, and this refers to exploding energy costs and to price increases in general. But we see in Bulgaria especially that the rise in energy and raw material prices is over. In the last year, the prices for most raw materials have fallen significantly. In second place are currency fluctuations and in third place are supply chain constraints and almost equal was the concern about energy bottlenecks this winter as well. But however, this can be neglected at the moment because winter is over. And in Bulgaria, industrial managers are quite optimistic right now about the current business situation as they have seen an increase in new orders in the last three months. The uncertain economic situation and labor shortages are the biggest challenges in Bulgaria. In addition, it is not known how the geopolitical tensions between Russia, the USA and China will develop in the future and whether they will cause further turbulences. Econ economists have so far estimated the effects of the Israel conflict to be quite limited, both for the world market and for Bulgaria. It had been assumed that the war would be limited to Israel and the Palestinian territories. But we have to wait and see what happens in the future. And what is also worthwhile to be mentioned is that last year there was a great fear of recession among European companies, but this had declined significantly this year. Yeah, what concrete effects does this have on the IT market? How is IT spending developing? Yeah, despite the difficult macroeconomic situation in Europe, IT spending is growing. 
This year, IT spending is expected to reach 1.2 trillion euros, which is a growth rate of around 11% compared to previous year. Half of this expenditure comes from the UK, Germany and France. This year, European companies are focusing on cost control, on efficiency and on automation in IT projects. For them, maintaining a healthy profit margin is crucial. The major analyst firms agree that the software segment will grow the most this year. The second important growth driver is the IT services segment. Part of the growth is due to the shortage of skilled workers in European IT departments. According to Gartner, IT professionals are increasingly leaving the IT departments of companies and preferring to switch to technology and service provi providers. It is therefore becoming increasingly difficult for companies to do all the work involved and they are forced to turn to IT service providers. While the market for devices declined last year and the year before, Growth is expected again this year. On the one hand, the average lifespan of many devices purchased during the Corona crisis is coming to an end. And on the other hand, the demand for devices with integrated AI functions is increasing. According to, con uh, to Canalys, about 10% of all PCs shipped are currently AI capable. For 2027, the share is forecasted to increase to 60%. IT spending will grow fastest this year in the Nordic countries. That means in Sweden, Finland and Norway. There is a strong base of software companies that are driving digital transformation and digital innovation. In contrast, a slight decline in IT spending is expected in Roma Romania as high inflation affects demand. For the next three years, a compound annual growth rate of approximately 9% is expected in Europe, resulting in a market volume of 1.7 trillion euros in 2028. In connection with the two growth segments, software and IT services, Cybersecurity is of particular importance. As artificial intelligence and hybrid work environments become more prevalent, so does the concern about cyber attacks. At the end of last year, two out of three companies expected to fall victim to a cyber attack within the next 12 months. Of those who expect an attack, only 40 percent believe they can successfully fend off this attack. The majority of 60 percent expect difficulties in defending themselves. It is predicted that spending on security will amount to around 41 billion euros across Europe this year. Compared to the, to the previous year, they will grow by about 12 percent. The highest growth rates will be found in the CE countries, for example, 15% in Bulgaria and 15% in Czech Republic. Splitting by industry, the highest growth rates can be seen in banking, media and entertainment and aerospace and defense. Banks, governments, telecommunication companies and retailers will invest the most in cybersecurity this year because cyber attacks can have serious consequences for the reputation and business operations of these organizations. These four industries are responsible for 38 percent, that's approximately 16 billion euros of European security spending. Small and medium-sized companies are usually less prepared for cyber attacks than larger companies and will therefore be particularly affected by the rising number of cyber attacks. In response, they will increasingly turn to managed services and train their employees to reduce these security risks. What is expected in terms of channel growth in 2024? 
According to context, opinions are divided. While about two-thirds of respondents expect positive growth, one in three predict stagnation or decline. Particularly rapid growth is expected for corporate resellers and small and medium resellers. So let's focus the Bulgarian market. Despite the challenges I described at the beginning, in 2024, IT spending is projected to grow 9% compared to previous year and to reach 2.4 billion euros. For those of you who are wondering about the market size because they were expecting a much higher number, I would like to add that they refer to figures with a much broader definition of the tech industry. The statistical office or commercial register take much more subsegments into account like telecommunication spending and software developer exports. But I, I have limited myself here to the actually relevant market for us. Having explained that, let's come back to the figures. For the next four years, a compound annual growth rate of 7% is expected. So in 2028, the IT spending is forecasted on 3.2 billion euros in Bulgaria. And as well as in European markets, cybersecurity will drive Bulgarian market too. Other fast growing segments will be public cloud and IoT in the next years. Within the public cloud segment, the most money will be spent for software as a service, and the fastest growing subsegment in the next four years will be platform as a service. But to be honest, similar as last year, it is expected that all segments, with the exception of devices, will grow in the next years. So you may have now the question, why does the Bulgarian devices market stay flat while the European market shows some growth? That is mainly based on the smartphone segment. Bulgaria's smartphone market shows especially an increase in demand for budget-friendly devices, while the European market increases in especially in devices with AI features. In Bulgaria, um, AI features are not that important as, for example, advanced camera features. They are more important for the Bulgarian demanders. Yeah, let's have a more detailed look on artificial intelligence. Although artificial intelligence is a priority for European companies this year and next, it is not yet a spending priority. Spending on AI is expected to reach nearly 44 billion euros in Europe this year. That's about 20% of global spending. For the next three years, an average annual growth rate of almost 34% is forecasted. According to IDC research from December 2023, one in three companies is already using AI solutions or plan to use them in the next 24 months. The reason for this is the need to optimize business processes. Artificial intelligence solutions are proven to help improve customer experiences and increase employee productivity. However, both the broad integration of AI solutions and related ethical issues pose challenges for companies. Last year, generative AI accounted for about 10% of AI spending. In the next few years, this share will grow significantly. It is expected that in 2027, it will be 25%. In the artificial intelligence market segment, software is the, is the largest area. Spending on software is higher than spending on hardware and services combined. In the period under review until 2027, software will also be the fastest growing segment. The reason for this is the increasing demand for AI applications and platforms. Banking, retail and software and information services are the three industries 
with the highest spending on AI. Together, they are responsible for almost a third of European AI market. In banking, AI solutions are particularly used in the field of cybersecurity and customer support. In retail, intense competition and the drive to improve customer experiences is leading to the use of AI. The software and services industry primarily provides AI infrastructure and resources necessary for data processing and storage, necessary for development of AI systems, or necessary for the provision of AI services to end users. And what is the AI spending in Bulgaria? Well, that's not, not so easy to answer. Every year, the European Commission assesses the degree of digitalization of its member states using the Index for the Digital Economy and Society. Bulgaria is in second to last place here. The digitalization of companies is well below the EU average. The acceptance of digital technologies by small and medium-sized enterprises is only almost half of the EU average. In 2022, only 6% of Bulgarian companies used big data, 10% cloud services and 3% artificial intelligence. Therefore, we estimate that less than 1% of European AI spending comes from Bulgaria and predict AI spending of around 400 million euros in Bulgaria this year. Assuming that the Bulgarian market develops in the same way as the European market, an AI volume of nearly 1 billion euros is forecasted for 2027. So what does the channel need to do to be prepared for the future? We see three main success factors that are relevant for the channel. The first is an adaptive business strategy. Driving growth in the current volatile environment requires an adaptive event-driven approach. After all, the faster the transformation rate, the more important adaptability becomes. What does that mean in concrete terms? First of all, it is important to determine the current challenges and assess their impact on the own business. Relevant adaption practices should then be identified. Basically, there are four points, all of which should be applied in the best case. This starts with the fact that decisions and measures should be implemented quickly in order to bring existing deficiencies to light and identify opportunities for improvement. The longer it takes to develop a plan, the less time you have to implement it and the risk increases that changes will occur and the plan will become obsolete. Due to the disruptive conditions, reactions to changes should be at an early stage. Companies should continuously monitor their business context and review their own strategic plan whenever new information becomes available. Companies will have to accept in future a higher level of risk. This also offers opportunities, not only risks like it may now have the impression. After all, companies that react quickly to events have a better chance of succeeding in an uncertain world. It is important that all stakeholders are involved. This is the only way to create a common understanding and secure broad support for the measures and decisions. The second success factor is a shift in product mix. The composition of the sales mix will change. The devices segment is not a long-term growth market, even if there will be growth here in the short term. We therefore assume that partners with a strong focus on client hardware will struggle to survive in the market in the medium and long term. We consider a focus on services and software to be much more promising. 
Services in particular play an important role for partners as they help partners differentiate themselves from the competition and create value for their customers. The breadth of the product portfolio is a crucial strength for sales partners in, in times of market uncertainty. But a broad product portfolio is not feasible for everyone. Larger partners, yes, they can realize this and this is for sure a big advantage over smaller ones. Smaller partners will be forced to specialize and this can be achieved with the help of services. Services play a central role in identifying security threats and optimization potential to increase efficiency for customers. Another point that stands up for more services is the fact that services usually have a greater contribution to the margin than products. Therefore, especially in times of economic instability, it is recommendable for the channel to concentrate more on service offerings. In Bulgaria, the service areas of strategic consulting, business process outsourcing and technology outsourcing are particularly worthwhile. In the software market, the segments artificial intelligence platforms, integration and orchestration middleware application platforms, software quality and lifecycle tools and security software are particularly interesting due to their high growth rates. Moreover, the growth in the in the software segment will also lead to growth of the IT service market because external IT staff will be needed for implementation and for support. And the third success factor is artificial intelligence. IDC surveyed companies on AI in January of this year. 37% believe AI will have a significant impact in the next 18 months. Nearly a quarter said artificial intelligence is starting already to disrupt their business. Canalys expects artificial intelligence to be the most integrated feature in hardware and software by 2026. That means in two years or um, in one and a half years. We see great opportunities for the channel through artificial intelligence in all areas, in hardware, in software and in services. In the hardware segment, we see potential for the channel in these four areas in particular. The first one is reselling hardware with integrated AI functions, which is basically the classic business for all of us. The second is build computing, storage, and network capacity to support new AI applications. AI will lead to an exponential increase in data generation that needs to be stored, that needs to be managed, and that needs to be secured. This will lead to massive investments in IT infrastructure over the next few years. A further aspect is the increased demand for components due to the advancement of AI functionalities. In the coming years, AI will continue to develop rapidly and become more complex. These advancements will increase the need for components such as RAM, storage and GPUs. And the last aspect is specialized hardware for edge computing and IoT. AI will increasingly be used in edge devices and IoT to process data on site and make quick decisions. This requires specialized hardware that is small, energy efficient and yet powerful. In the software market, three areas are promising. The first one is development of generative AI software applications and plugins that automate repetitive tasks such as content creation or data entry. The second one is the customer specific development work such as the adoption of AI software or its integration into existing systems. And maybe the most important opportunity 
are AI-driven cybersecurity measures. AI-driven cybersecurity measures provide a higher level of security by using real-time data analytics to identify anomalies and suspicious activity, allowing attacks to be detected more accurately and quickly. In addition, AI can also be used to predict possible future attacks by combining and analyzing historical data and current trends. This allows proactive measures to be taken to close weak points and prepare for potential attacks. Canalys estimates that 70% of organizations will support their cybersecurity operations with generative AI tools within the next five years. 70% of organizations, I'm repeating it. And in the service segment, we see potential, especially in support of the introduction, implementation, use and optimization of artificial intelligence. For example, in the selection of suitable providers and platforms. Cloud providers provide special AI hardware in their data centers and offer AI as a service. This allows companies to access powerful AI resources without having their own hardware. Other areas are integration of artificial intelligence into existing IT infrastructure and or support and training of employees. A further important area um, is data services that help organizations efficiently use and process large amounts of data such as automated data analysis and reporting. As I already said, there are opportunities for the channel in all market segments, but we expect revenues to be realized primarily in the areas of services and software. Partners will help their customers integrate these revolutionary complex features so that they both solve business problems and are profitable. And this will be a key driver of future revenue in the channel. So what can you take away for yourself and your business for, from all that I have just told? I think these are essentially two things. The current macroeconomic situation poses some challenges for all of us. We have, infla we have inflation that is no longer as strong as in 2022, but it still has a negative e effect on business and consumer demand. We have higher interest rates than a few years ago, and they will probably remain high, making IT projects more expensive and we have geopolitical conflicts that have a negative impact on confidence. All of this can result in the postponement or even cancellation of IT projects. Customers could decide to use their existing infrastructure for longer than originally planned. While sure, this is understandable, especially from a short term perspective, it can be harmful in the medium and long term. IT investments can help to gain competitive advantages in many ways. For example, the introduction of new technologies can replace manual processes with digital solutions, which can reduce costs and optimize workflows. The use of advanced technologies can also improve the quality of products and services, providing customers with real added value that can differentiate them from the competition. The increasing number of legal regulations and the demands from the market for more sustainability also offer opportunities for the tech industry. This puts increasing pressure on companies to manage their ecological footprint. In this context, the IT infrastructure plays an important role. In order to realize the goal of green IT, the IT architecture must be modernized. 
And last year, there, there were only few product renewals. This is because IT equipment and infrastructure were purchased at the beginning of the pandemic, and the life cycle of this hardware will not come to an end until this year or next. Just like the switch to Windows 11, this will have a positive impact on the hardware business. And I have just spoken in detail about the opportunities of artificial intelligence for the IT market. You can see that the risks which we are facing from the current macroeconomic situation can also have positive effects. Therefore, the first conclusion you should take away today is that not all risks are negative per se. They can also have beneficial effects. Opportunities can arise from risks. And the second key finding is that the channel is in focus. This is because partners are best placed to meet the needs for both manufacturers and customers. Yes, we live in uncertain times in which profound changes occur at ever shorter intervals. It is therefore essential to respond quickly and appropriately. The ability to choose from a variety of different offerings to meet customers' specific business needs is a significant advantage for channel partners in the future. And in the future, the channel will therefore play a key role as partners provide customized solutions and support. And to use the analogy, you could also say that IT investments are to companies what fertilizer is to plants. They promote growth and help reap the fruits of success. And the partners are the growers who use their expertise and the right tools to ensure that every customer can thrive and bloom. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions regarding the things I have told, please don't hesitate to contact me, preferably via email. Write to tanya.stetter at also.com.